bless your name. Father, I thank you that you are a God that's altogether trustworthy. And though you try me, I will trust you. Though you slay me, I will trust you. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you in all the earth. And I bless your name today, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord God. Fathers, we break your word this morning. Open our eyes that we might see you. Open our ears, Father. Lord, each one here, let there be a word in what I'm about to say, Father, that comes directly from you. Let it be like an arrow that's at a certain target, Father. Lord, I thank you for these that are here. Lord, I know it's not an accident. This is indeed a divine appointment. And I'm here at the right time, the right place, because you've ordained it before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. Break your word, Father. Let your anointing fall in this place. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, or I don't know if it's up on the screen, I want you to turn to the book of Joshua. And I'm going to read from Joshua chapter 1, uh, beginning in verses 1 through 9. And I'd ask you to stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Joshua 1, beginning in verses 1 through 9, says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of, every, of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observest to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then sh thou shalt have good success. Read with me. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. I want to put your hand on your heart and say, The Lord thy God is with me. The Lord thy God is with me. Amen. You may be seated. God add his blessing to the reading of the word. Be strong and of a good courage. And be not afraid. 
neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Several weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me from this book, saying, Be strong, be very courageous, Amen. for the Lord thy God is with you. Amen. So I began to meditate on these words and also study this book and this man called Joshua. This morning I want to share some of the things that I observed from this book and in the life of Joshua. I found out that Joshua was one of the few chosen to stand in the very presence of Almighty God. He was an optimist who saw the potential and the possibility rather than the obstacles and the failure. Joshua was a man of great faith. I don't know of anyone else in history who prayed for God to stop the sun, and God granted it. Amen. Amen. And by the way, NASA has, scientists have documented that this did in fact occur, and they factored that time frame into their calculations to launch the first satellites into space. And it was not until they were able to factor that in, and it was a Christian on the team that remembered that scripture, that they were able to successfully do this back Amen. in the in the early 60s. Amen. 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 So, you know, people can say this is just a book of stories, but it, it is layer upon layer of fact and revelation. Amen. Joshua was ruthless when it came to disobedience because he understood that it affected the whole camp. Mm -hmm. Joshua was a worshiper, and he loved the presence of God. Amen. And finally, he left a very strong legacy behind him. He encouraged the people to stay faithful to God, even in his dying breath. Yes. This morning, let's take a closer look at his background and see what we can learn and apply to our own lives. Amen. Amen. Because I know we've read this story, and it's very familiar to most of us, but God wants to speak. This is a living word. And this is not just a historical story. There are truths. There are nuggets of gold Amen. that God wants us to glean and apply to our own lives. Amen. 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 And I can't say that I have all of them, but I just want to share what God has given me this morning. Joshua was actually known as Hoshea, the son of Nun, which means Savior. He was of the tribe of Ephraim. He was a warrior with great military skill and became Moses' protege. He spent the early part of his life training to become not only a warrior, but a spiritual leader. Joshua was first mentioned in Exodus chapter 17 when he leads Israel into battle against the Amalekites who attacked them immediately after they crossed the Red Sea. And I don't know if you know that much about the Amalekites, but they were a tribe of people who were known for praying on the weak. Yes. They were known for trying to attack, you know, suddenly without uh, provocation. My Lord. And God, at, at this point, when they were at their most vulnerable, just crossing over into the land, having crossed the Red Sea, they came after them. They saw them coming, and they came after them. And from that point on, God had it in for that tribe, and he told the people of God to destroy them. And how many know Saul later refused and disobeyed God and didn't take them out, and Samuel had to come in and take out the rest of them. But Joshua is the one who first deals and defeats them. It was Joshua who waited for Moses at the foot of Mount Sinai when Moses went up to commune with God and received the Ten Commandments. We find Joshua often at the place of worship. He couldn't go up that mountain but he could see God's glory and be in the shadow of it. Amen. 
And he chose to stay on that mountain that entire time that Moses was up there. And that tells me a couple of things. Not only was he a worshiper, but he had no part in the sin of Israel when they built that golden calf. Because he wasn't there, wasn't in the camp. Later, we find over and over again that when Moses would go into the tabernacle, Joshua would go with him. And the glory cloud would fall in front of that tabernacle. And Moses would step into that cloud and God would speak to him face to face. Joshua was inside the tent. And Moses would leave and go back and tell the people what God said. But not Joshua. Amen. Joshua would stay yes. and tabernacle with God Amen. inside that tent. Yes. Joshua was a worshiper. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to say, you know, we can listen to all the tapes, all the preachers, all the books. But it all comes down to one thing. Amen. And this is, the, this is the story of Joshua. It's the story of Moses. It's the story of you and I. God calls us to worship Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's that simple. 